All right, it's day 59. It's late May 2019. The seventh leaf that you see on the right of the center here is a yellowish green. It's maturing, but like in previous growing attempts over the last three years, it remains very small compared to the first set of six true leaves. But in this case, you could see the leaf primordia at the shoot apical meristem in the center. Top have formed what looks to be a second set of true leaves developing and that looks much bigger than anything I've ever seen in my previous series you can see some little bugs on these leaves bugs just love the smell that exudes from mango leaves and they constantly will fly over and land on it so that's why I've been applying imidacloprid to many of my plants I've had two small doses of that I can't really apply that much because the tube is so narrow so there's not that much space for any kind of insecticide or fertilizer there to go in or water. So this method is very limited in that respect, but so far it's given me more success than any of my other uh, mango growing attempts. So I'm really happy with that. The leaves gained a lot of turgor pressure as you just saw, and they're far more erect than they were in any of my... Um, previous series I believe. Well maybe not the 98 days in a Snapple container one that I grew indoors with a towel that would keep the root system moist. The root system was suspended in air. So in that series because I had an LED panel overhead uh, the leaves were nearly uh, parallel to the ground. You can see uh, my thumb reaching up there for a height reference. So this seedling is the biggest I've ever gotten, I believe. And on day 69, I found out that the roots had reached halfway down the tube. This was the deepest one I can find. So it sort of looks like a petroglyph in the American Southwest carved on the rocks. And I'm always amazed at how beautiful the roots are. They're always a dark charismatic red and it's sort of ruined here by all this algae I believe at least I think that's algae but the algae can potentially provide oxygen so plant roots need oxygen only they don't need carbon dioxide they give off carbon dioxide they need to breathe like animal cells do so only the leaves will give off oxygen that's why it's important for the soil to be oxygenated Otherwise, uh, plant roots can't function over time. So this tube balancing in a detergent container is proving cumbersome for filming. I always have to make sure this whole gig is balanced. Otherwise, it might fall over and be disastrous. It might um, knock or break something off this plant. And as it gets bigger and bigger, that's a bigger concern. So... I'm just making some comparisons to my hand for size and the leaves are very waxy and big. Um, they don't really have a fragrance to me but the insects find them irresistible. And it seems that the misting with distilled water really helps and I tend to do that at night so um, it doesn't evaporate immediately. And I'm giving you a reference for how tall this stem is right now. So I'm wondering if there's going to be increased distance between the, the leaf nodes or is new growth just going to shoot out on top. So I don't know because I haven't experienced it yet. And this is an example of me misting. So I'm spraying distilled water and I make sure I get it from different angles, especially the undersides where all of the spider mites hang out but the flying insects they park on both sides of the leaves and this helps drive them away as well and it doesn't hurt definitely I tend to do this at night so it doesn't evaporate immediately so if there's spider webs and other disgusting things then you can try to use uh, probably a cotton swab or some soft object or a stick to gently just brush all that stuff away so for filming purposes, I need aesthetics too. I can't just leave this and let it become a hot mess, which it will tend to become in the hot, dry Southern Californian climate. 
So I figure these live in tropical regions. They need simulated rain. So it's day 73. I replaced that cracked and worn wooden table that had all of its wood stain run off over time and rub off. And I replaced that with a wire rack. Um, it's a pretty cheap one that I got off Amazon and it's been very effective at keeping this thing balanced. So the second set of leaves on day 77 are growing along with a new section of stem. I've never seen any of this before so I'm really excited and I placed a runoff tray underneath and tied this mango tube to the wire rack, the wire shelf rack in two places. So I no longer have to worry about balancing this while I'm filming it and moving it around and doing other operations. And the plant just looks dazzling at this point. It seems like the inner nodes between the original six leaves, seven leaves maybe, they're not going to get any longer. It's just that a new growth will shoot out on top. So it's sort of like the beginning all over again except this is being added to what I've already gotten. And so far I've been misting every few days and uh, the droplets of water give it a really an attractive, beautiful appearance. So this thing is getting taller, but not in the way that I thought it would. I thought the original stem would just keep getting taller. So this seventh leaf here is still puny. It's not fully green or as dark as any of the other leaves. So that's one thing I don't really understand about mango seedling development. Like why is it that the first seven leaves are all different sizes and they, they have all these inexplicable curls to them. At least in every attempt that I've had in many different conditions in the online series that I've shown and some offline attempts as well. So this stem is sort of a purplish red, it's, it's pink, you know, it's beautiful. So day 82, uh, there's more growth and look how tall this thing has gotten in a matter of just days. It's added easily an extra inch and it was very hard to tell how many um, leaves were in the making. Maybe it's seven. It's really hard to tell when the leaf primordia are very small. So it seems like there's a little yellow one sticking off as well. I don't know if all those things will become leaves, but at least there's like four uh, obvious ones. So that distance is about the same. I'm treating with more imidacloprid as I'm still seeing flying insects parked on the leaves. Um, even though it seems like a lot of treatments uh, by volume and concentration, it really isn't. It's most of my other plants that get a lot of the imidacloprid treatment. And mostly it's to deal with fungus gnats and spider mites. So as you can see here, it doesn't look like there's much going on in the places that have already been colonized by these little red roots, um, lateral roots. I don't know how big thick or deep the main tap root goes. I'm under the impression from my very first growing attempt that that thing just makes a race for the bottom and that's why I chose a tube that's about a meter tall. So I've been misting with distilled water every few days since day 45 since the end of episode 1 per a suggestion I got from a viewer and I think it's really helped and by misting after the sun goes down well, on this balcony, this plant and all my other plants only get maybe four and a half hours of direct sun in the morning tops. And then everything is shrouded in shade or, you know, indirect reflected light at best. So it spends most of its time out of direct sun. Maybe that can contribute to bigger leaf growth. And by misting, the water droplets last even until the morning. There are some drops remaining despite the dry air here in San Diego County. So that stem sort of uh, has an interesting appearance. It reminds me of the appearance of tree tobacco, an invasive species that grows all around here in disturbed soils. Its stems are that color and the top is uh, beautiful, although that 
biggest leaf that's near us, it's really paper thin. It's thinner than paper and it's sort of a light pink. Um, I think after a few days, the foliage will be a far more attractive when it gets longer and better. But for now, you know, that pink stem is just beautiful to look at. So always remember to spray the undersides of the leaves. Spray from different angles. That's where the spider mites reside. So I've never gotten this far with a mango seedling before. In my three years of trying, I've always stalled out at around the same stage as I did in 2016. So this is all very new and exciting for me. I'm very happy because of that. You can see the endosperm of the seed is exposed there. I can try to rearrange the sand a little bit or add some after I apply some more imidacloprid and I'm only pouring this in because the first dose went in so fast it seems like the soil the sand mixture is finally very receptive to water so thanks for watching and please stay tuned for another episode